Now we will come to the next video. Uh, we meet um, Gunnar from Inforce, the International Network of Sustainable Energy. Ein Zusammenschluss vieler kleiner NGOs weltweit, die zusammen viel stärker sind. Gunnar wird uns ein bisschen was erzählen über die Vorteile von Inforce und was Inforce eigentlich ist. Gunnar will tell us something about Inforce and the advantages for small NGOs to go into Inforce. Please, now it's your stage. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we're working, we've been working now for more than 25 years with uh, Inforce as a network of NGOs who want to promote renewable energy and energy efficiency. And uh, we try to make it that we combine the different kind of resources. Some NGOs are working very practical, some want to uh, help people with developing renewable energy or get advice on how to save energy. Others are working more politically. And uh, together, by being such a network, we've for instance been able to be registered here with the climate conference and we've been able to participate and uh, show our ideas of the local renewable energy solutions for uh, this uh, climate conference and in other places also we are working with the European Union trying to promote energy efficiency and more renewable energy and stronger policies for renewable energy which is some of the things that we can do better as a network than individual small organizations can do. And uh, of course there are more and more of these networks like ours, but uh, we still want to have our special focus on the transition to renewable energy, which is of course more and more speaking about, but not just any transition. We need a transition where the local people and where the local ideas and solutions are also taken into account and where there's a, it's a transition for all, it's not just a transition of the big powers becoming big powers once again just in another form. Uh, so this is what we are working on and at the moment we just had uh, this uh, here side event where we promoted new guidelines for larger renewable energies that is now coming more and more to Africa and where they have seen getting some of the same problems that we have experienced for instance in Europe where we had many renewable developments where in some countries there was a lot of protests partly for many different reasons but also because that the local people were not getting involved and the local people were not getting benefit and in Africa they have other problems that we have in Europe they have much more space even now they have a growing population but they have much less access to electricity so just giving for instance putting up a wind park or a solar park and then giving the people around access to electricity is maybe the solution to get actually support for the local development but also getting development into this because in Europe everybody has access to electricity that's not the case in Africa yeah. and that is one of the big needs and also one of the big demands and this is basically one of the next step of the development but we're also working in Europe we're working for instance in the European Commission with the eco design regulations and trying to have stronger rules so we'll have better both products and better information to consumers because all these things are for every day's life important but in Europe it's organized so things has to be decided in Brussels and that's where we are able to go. It's fantastic what you say. Um, we spoke with some NGOs here on the conference and yeah. they are um, part of Inforce and yeah. they spoke about the scalierung, the scalierung of their projects that you are a little bit like a collector of good projects worldwide and on the press conference yeah. um, I was impressed that you show there are some very good projects from the NGOs who are members of your um, network. Um, um, please tell the people one or two very cool special projects you have in the uh, new uh, past. Well, I mean, we just uh, told about one thing about this eco-village development where we take this individual small renewable energy solution that has shown to be a success and that has been implemented in South Asia where one of the big issues is that uh, traditionally everybody are cooking with wood or cow dung which is quite polluting and it's really a problem for the uh, health of the people, of the women in particular who are cooking and it's also a problem for some places of the less and less resources of wood and for burning the cow dung so the natural uh, 
content of the cow dung should be reserved, recycled as a fertilizer is not uh, valued. And therefore, we by taking this uh, uh, these solutions together with other solutions which are helping their development with organic farming, with greenhouses in places where it's cold, in uh, different other places, then it's uh, possible to get uh, development in a village, combining a number of different things, starting not from coming with a lot of improved cook stoves or whatever, but uh, starting to asking the having a dialogue with the citizens, with the people in the village, what are their demands, what are their needs, and then of course also training them, learning them what kind of solutions that are out there they might not know about. And based on that, we are then, uh, they're then doing the development of this eco-village. And the idea is that we've been supporting from, we have raised some Danish funds for have supporting this a little bit, but now of course the idea is that it should be partly local financed or partly financed from a country, say India, who already have their own development programs inside India, which can be used better and can also be used for these local solutions. That's fine. Um, we must come to the end. Um, yes. How many NGOs are in your club? I mean, we have registered 150 organizations as members of Inforce, but we also have a list of more than a thousand contacts. Okay. So if you go into our website, I think you can see yeah. it down here, uh, then it's uh, possible to uh, register as a contact. And if you are an NGO or a member of an NGO who are working on renewable energy and energy efficiency, you're also welcome to apply for membership. That's fine. And I think we will make an email address in the picture. You yes. give us the email address. Yes. And then a lot of NGOs can come to your network and yeah. uh, and have a scale advantage. Thank you very much, Gunnar. Thank you. Uh, and, and good luck. Yes, me too. Yeah. Bye bye.